Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we're making an anchor. We're making an awesome anchor. So stick around. Today's DIY is an awesome anchor. And speaking of DIYs, if you haven't been on my channel page before, go check it out. Cause I got a long list of DIYs that'll help you save money. And if you find something you like, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. I got two more videos about river anchors that I made. One of them was an ordinary river anchor that works really good, might I add. On the other video I made, I made the same river anchor that come apart for easier storage. On today's anchor, it's made kind of like a plow, and to me it looks like it would hold the Titanic in a hurricane. I saw this anchor on Google, and I'm not sure who the person that came up with this idea was, but I've seen a bunch of pictures on there, and there was a few places that sold this anchor. So I'll leave a link in the comment box below to where you can go buy one if you don't want to build one. But anyway, let's quit wasting time and let's get into this build. I'm gonna be starting out with some quarter inch flat stock and it's two inches wide. I think the bottom on this anchor needs to be a little bit stronger. Plus this will give it a little bit of weight. And I got some inch and a quarter square tubing that I had for another project and it's been laying in the woodshed and I'm gonna use it. I've got a good bit of material, but it's not gonna take a lot to make this anchor, but I'm excited to see how good this anchor holds. First thing I think we need to do is go ahead and get this cut up and then we can talk about our measurements. So I got my pieces cut. Cut this one and a quarter square tube in. This is 13 and a half inches. This is 11 inches. I cut my quarter inch by two inch pieces at 18 inches. The reason I cut these 18 inches is because my anchor locker from that side to this right here is 17 and a half inches. And it being 17 and a half inches, cutting these at 18 inches, when I bend them, they're gonna get shorter. So they'll be less than 17 and a half inches. This piece here is the width of it. So it's 13 and a half inches, so the whole thing maybe 14, 15 inches wide. So either way I turn this anchor, it's gonna fit in my anchor locker. I also cut up some rebar at 13 inches. I had this rebar laying around. And the reason I did it is so on this bottom piece, if I wanna add a little weight, I can put some rebar in it, tack it in there, and that'll add a little bit of weight to the bottom. Now the next step we need to do is I'm gonna cut these ends to a point. All four of them. And I'm gonna use my little bandsaw to do that. I've got a video about making this bandsaw. It's a pretty cool build, and it's really handy for what it costs. With the Harbor Freight Bauer bandsaw, you can actually make you one of these for about a hundred bucks. Now I got my points cut on the ends of my tines for my anchor. So the next step I need to do is I need to bend them. I'm gonna measure four inches in and bend it on all four sides. And I'll be using my Harbor Freight brake press I made. I have a video about it. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. This thing's really handy, it's 20 tons. What's cool about this press brake die is it allows you to bend metal and it allows you to do it in ways you can't do without a press brake. This side here is perfect. I mean, they're pretty close, they're close enough. You line your bend lines up, they're at just about the same angle. But see this side here, how this one's way over bent? This is where it should be. Well, I kind of over bent this one a little bit too much so I could show you something. 
If you over bend a part, it's easy to fix it. All you gotta do is flip it over, hit it with a hammer a few times, and keep flipping it back and checking it, and you'll get it right to where it needs to be. But as you can see, now both sides line up the way they're supposed to. The bend lines are right, the angle's right. We got our tines ready. I just need to sand these ends, they're a little bit rough. And we'll be ready to finish putting this together. Remember what I was telling you about how this port was 18 inches long and it's a little bit too long to go in the anchor locker. But after I bend it, it would be right. Now that I've bent it, if we check it again, it's at 15 inches. So we got our tines made and we got the port that goes across the bottom made. The next thing I need to do is I want to clean all this metal up. This has a little surface rust on it, and this has a lot of mill scale on it. All right, I got my pieces cleaned up now. They're ready to weld, ready to paint. Next, I'm gonna put my rebar inside my bottom brace, and I'm gonna need some caps. So I drawed off four one and a half inch caps. Next, I'm gonna cut these out, weld my rebar inside the tube, then weld my caps on the end. Oh, and by the way, I was able to get three pieces of the rebar in a one and a quarter inch square tubing. I did have to use a little bit of persuasion though. When you're welding these caps on the end, we're not really looking for a structural weld. I mean, you want a good weld, but all I do is tap, 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 because we just want to close it up where water can't get in it. It's not like we're building a trailer or something. So I got my ends cleaned up, and it actually ended up being pretty heavy after I put the rebar in it. I got it all lined up. Now I'm just going to tack this down on both sides so it can't move. And I drew me some little gussets out that I'm going to cut out with my bandsaw. And I'm going to use them to give this a little more stability. All right, so I got the bottom welded all together. Got it waterproof. This thing's starting to get some weight to it, which is not a bad thing. Next, we gotta fix our top piece. And I got two more end caps that I'm gonna have to weld on to it. I'm gonna close both ends up. That's actually a really good way of welding. Hit it, move, hit it, move. But you can seal up a crack like that and you don't have to worry about burning up all your metal. I cut me a couple of pieces of metal off of this three inch flat stock I got. It's a little rusty. You can clean it up with a sander. Cut it like an inch wide. And what it's for, it's gonna go on this top section but we'll put it on here. One will go on each side and it's going to have a hole down here at the bottom and a hole up here at the top. The bottom will have a stainless steel bolt running through it and the top hole will take a pin that's got one of these ball bearings in it. And basically this bracket on this anchor is going to make it where you can fold the top down and make it more storable. So basically it's going to turn it into a folding anchor. So next I need to drill my holes for these brackets and then weld them on. So I got my bottom hole drilled and I'm just gonna use it 
to figure out where I need to weld it at. See, you can't let this touch. You're gonna have to lift it up a little bit because if you don't, the corner right here is gonna hit when you flip your top down. So I drilled the bottom hole. Now I'm gonna get the height right, get it in the center, and I'm gonna tack it down. Then we'll drill our top hole. So basically what I did, I'm using this clamp to hold it all together and I got my parts lined up, make sure they're loose, get them where they need to be and I'm gonna tack it together. Hopefully this works because I've never built one of these before. This pin, the hole has to be tight that it goes through because this bearing keeps it from coming out. Now, if you used a pin like this, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Something else you could do is you could run two bolts through it and put a wing nut on one side and just take it off when you want to fold it down. This is a mushroom anchor, pretty much. It's got the sides cut out a little bit. Looks more aggressive. It's 15 pounds. And it works pretty good. This is the first river anchor I made. It's a little bit lighter than this mushroom anchor, but it holds at least twice as good. The reason I'm showing you that, look at the holding surface on this one and look at it on this one. This thing's gonna hold the Titanic. This thing is pretty awesome. And it come out pretty good. I mean, this thing's snug when you put it together. And if you pull this pin, it breaks down and it doesn't take as much room up. I really like this. Now the only thing I got left to do is I need to put something to hold my tie strap on the top and I need to put something down here to anchor the chain to. I'm liking this anchor. I'm really liking it. And the only thing we got left to do now now we need to paint her up. Ended up going with a bed liner spray because it'll be a little bit tougher on the bottom. And I painted the top flat black and I put a catfish sticker on it because it is a catfish anchor. Honestly, it's making me want to go catfishing. Look, be sure that you put this on the bottom of your anchor, this little link, because you're going to need to attach your chain down here so you can run your chain up and put a tie strap on it because this anchor looks like it's going to hold pretty dang good and it's probably going to be hard to pull loose. So make sure you got a tie strap on this. Well, that anchor turned out awesome. I really like it and now I'm going to have to build me one because actually I built this for my buddy and that catfish decal really made this thing pop. And if you wanna know where you can get one, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below too. Look guys, if you like this video, click that like button. And if you're not subscribed, then <laughs> what you waiting on? And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next build.